so the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to pop into Max for a second. And uh, the scene that I'm going to open up has been rendered out in V-Ray. And the way that I've done that, one of the things that V-Ray 2.0 has added is a feature now that when you render to the V-Ray raw image file, you can now choose Open EXR from your output. You also have the option to choose whether or not the EXR f uses a full 32-bit output or if that is not checked it's going to use a 16-bit floating point output and, uh, and there is a big difference between 16-bit floating point and, uh, and a 16-bit file which we can talk about a little bit later but this open EXR file is going to render out and give us exactly what we need now what we're also going to do is we're going to turn on all of our render elements that we want to bring into our composite this list of render elements uh, some are redundant uh, in terms of they generate certain things that uh, that are already pre-generated for instance a pass such as uh, the raw reflection and the reflection filter those get multiplied to turn into the V-Ray reflection but I'm gonna render out all of these so that we can bring them into Photoshop and see what uh, see what we can do with them when you render out a V-Ray EXR file here it is gonna render out all of those render elements that we selected into one single file. That's a nice feature if you have something that can open up a uh, multi-layered EXR file. Compositing packages such as After Effects and Nuke and Fusion, uh, those will all be able to open up those multi-channeled EXR files. In fact, After Effects uh, has integrated a software now that was generated by these folks here at FNord Software. Uh, and that is a program called Pro EXR. Uh, so in the latest versions of After Effects, uh, this comes installed. But for those of you that are using Photoshop, and that's what this class is about, uh, we actually have to have a separate plugin for Photoshop in order for it to see all of the multi-layered uh, elements inside of a single EXR. Now, if you don't have Pro EXR, you can certainly go ahead and render out your separate channels, but what you'll want to do is you want to save out your separate mats as or your separate elements as individual files. I find that to be a little bit cumbersome because for every rendering then we've got uh, you know a whole slew of different uh, files that we need to keep track of so the beauty of containing it all within one EXR is that you only have one file to find so I'm gonna go ahead and close down max here just to save a little bit of system resource and I'm gonna open up Photoshop CS5 64-bit now there's a couple things to, to be uh, aware of. I'm opening up Photoshop CS5 Extended and it's very important that if you're going to try to attempt to work with 32-bit uh, files, oh that's great Max decided to uh, crash on exit for me, um, when you open up 32-bit files such as EXRs you're gonna want to use Photoshop Extended for the simple fact that you will be able to use layers in those files. Without extended you're not able to layer 32-bit files. So I've got uh, the Pro EXR software installed here for, for Photoshop and so when I go to open up my EXR file that I'd rendered which is called terrace.exr and I hit open it's gonna ask me uh, a couple of options of what I want to do. It's gonna say do I want to cut out the alpha channel or do I want to keep it on a separate layer and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep my alpha channel on a separate layer. Go ahead and hit OK. And uh, assign it my working profile. Great. So here's the rendering that I've created. And what you'll notice is I've got all those render elements that I selected over here on in my layer stack. Now, as I mentioned, uh, if you're not working in 32-bit, uh, or if you're not working in Photoshop Extended, you're not able to create layers over here in the stack. You would be able to open them up with layers, but you would not be able to generate them. So, a couple of things that I need to do just to start off the, the bat. Now, when I'm working in a 32-bit file, because I'm working in float, I have the ability, and down here is my exposure slider, 
I have all of this information that's baked into my scene, which is really great from a compositing and color correction standpoint. Uh, for instance, and if I double click, it'll just reset back to, to zero. If I want to up the exposure on some areas, if I want to get some get back some detail, uh, I have that. So rendering out your files as 32-bit uh, images uh, is like camera raw on steroids really so there's that that's a a great thing to to do so up top here is my beauty pass uh, I've got an alpha channel and my alpha channel I'm just gonna actually move to my channel so I'm just gonna grab that copy it go to channels and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it into an alpha I guess I should have pasted it in an alpha one but that's okay and that's just because I don't necessarily want to have it in my stack but I want to keep that uh, available for when I have a selection. I've got a specular uh, pass, a self-illumination pass, which doesn't have any data in it right now, so I'm actually going to go ahead and delete my self-illumination pass. But if you were uh, creating a full composite, let's say it was a nighttime shot or you had some glowing objects, you'd want to keep that self-illumination in there. I'm just going to delete it to save a little space. I've got a refraction filter. Uh, refraction, reflection filter, reflection, and all my raw passes, my GI, lighting, and then the diffuse filter. Okay, so we want to start building our composites, and I, like I mentioned in the beginning, I've got a few too many things. Uh, I've actually got enough here to do two different types of composites. So the first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to separate all of these ones that are not raw. So I'm going to take my V-Ray Refraction, my Reflection, my Lighting, my Global Illumination. And I'm going to take all of those, include my Specular, and with those selected I'm going to hit Control G and group them into Comp A. Now, just looking at these pieces, let's talk about what we can do my global illumination is going to be my base layer here this is that uh, that layer that render element that shows just what happens from the GI and then my lighting is what's happening with my lighting layers well the lighting if I put that on linear dodge and I add it that's going to be the correct composite for those two elements and actually the same goes for the reflection and refraction so I'm going to go ahead and add my refraction going to add my reflection, put that on add, and this little bit of specular highlights not going to make a whole lot of difference but we'll go ahead and put that on add as well. And then what I can do is I can turn on my RGB, this is my beauty channel, and if I turn that off you'll notice that my images are identical except for one little tiny spot and I'll zoom in and show you what that is. Uh, when I originally put this file together I hadn't gone through and double checked that every single material was set to a V-Ray material and V-Ray really wants you to go ahead and use all of those great options for uh, V-Ray materials and in this case I'd used a standard blend instead of a V-Ray blend material and that explains the difference just on these uh, couple of vases here but for all intents and purposes we've just been able to take and separate out our lighting, reflection, refraction, specular, put those all on separate layers and build up the comp uh, exactly the way that it would would be had we rendered it out that way. Well let's go ahead and build up uh, uh, another version of this. I'm going to go ahead and take all of these elements and hit control G and I'm going to group these into comp B and this is going to be my my raw now this one gets a little bit trickier and there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of finite details that uh, that we talk about in the class but just for the purposes of illustrating uh, what the power of this is uh, in our one hour webinar segment here I'm gonna focus on uh, some some ways to put this together easily and uh, and make then make some changes that we can measure and go back in and render so my V-Ray diffuse filter is uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off comp A. 
The V-Ray Diffuse Filter is that render element that is just the material surface uh, coloration and texture on it. There's no lighting on it, there's no shading, it's only what that, uh, what that color is. Well, in order to get at uh, our global illumination layer, and this is our ROG GI layer, and that looks pretty nice. Um, nice and clean in most spots. We've got a couple of little areas that uh, you know maybe we'd want to work on a little bit. Well this raw GI layer when that gets multiplied by the diffuse filter that essentially becomes what we had up here in our global illumination layer. So let me go ahead and take these two pieces here together and I'm gonna go ahead and group them and call it GI and I'll take that and multiply it. Uh, find multiply there. So now when I look at my GI layer compared to my GI layer here, you'll notice that they're identical except for uh, a couple of alpha channel things that are happening because I'm, I'm overlaying this on top of it. But uh, that's exactly mathematically what's happening under the hood in V-Ray to produce this.